Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel, Ardith Design, where we celebrate all things count and cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and little doll baby pugs. channel welcome and if you're returning I am so happy you came back to spend time with me uh, today we are going to do a little show and tell of all the pieces that I cleaned from my 1990s cross stitch found extravaganza and then I'm gonna answer a couple of viewer questions and then talk about the giveaway winner at two I got two giveaway winners so stay tuned and let's talk about stitching ah! Okay, my first thing is I had a question and I realized I has never actually talked about this. Like really flushed this idea out. So here we go. The question is, Amanda May, what is sustainable stitching? Oh my gosh, this is so exciting for me to talk about. First off, y'all know and love the Save the Stitches, right? You can use it on Instagram, social media, on Pinterest. Save the stitches is you found find like a completed piece. Here, I got this one right here. It's all matted. It's framed. It's lavender and lace. Thank you, all of you who played the stitching matchmaker game with me for that beautiful piece. Save the stitches. You find a piece at the thrift store. Yeah, bring it on home. All right. So sustainable stitching takes that idea a little bit farther and looks at things in a more holistic view as far as saving and preserving. So I thought, how can I get this concept out there better? So I made a little infographic. I'm going to have it available on my website, artithdesign.com, where you can download it for free. It's going to be a free printable so that you can not only share the joy of needlework like Country Stitchers, Deb and Liz, sharing the joy of needlework, but also doing a little bit of sustainability things in the meantime on top of everything. So here, here we go. And I got a pug chewing on something behind me. What do you got? What do you got? All right. What is sustainable stitching? So number one, save the stitches. See a cross stitch piece at the thrift store. Can you afford to bring it home? Number two, rehome abandoned projects. Sick of that piece you're stitching on? You can rehome it. Yes, you can. Abandoned needlework pieces can be resold to other stitchers or you can re-gift it. You don't have to throw it away. There are plenty of stitchers out there that would love to stitch on your piece. You can resell it like on an um, online platform like Etsy or eBay. You can do it on a, on a Facebook group. You know, they have de-stash pages. Hi, Loki Apple. Hi, do you want to say hi to friends? Hi, friends. Hi. Hi. So rehome abandoned projects. Number two, number three, be creative with the unflattering or dated materials. So you found a not so pretty color of Ada cloth, Ada fabric at the thrift store. And it was like 50 cents. Well, what am I going to do with a yard of fabric for 50 cents? That's kind of like an ugly 1980s yellow. Well, you go on down to the laundry section in most of the grocery stores and pick up a bottle of Rit dye or a couple bottles. And if you have the ability, if you in, are in a space with um, plumbing and a sink, um, stainless, if you have stuff, thrift stores buy like an old pot, like an old stainless steel. Like I use the, the chafing dishes. I got two chafing dishes now. I don't use them for food. I use them to dye. So I transform the ugly yellow fabric all of a sudden now I've got artisanal blue and red and burgundy fabrics that I have stitched on. 50 cent fabric, less than $5 in dye. And yes, time is money. So you're spending your time transforming the items. But at the end of the day, you are going to have fabric that nobody else has. And again, if you don't like it, you can resell it or gift it to a fellow stitcher. All right, number four buy used finishing supplies. So do you need a frame for a finish to finish your piece? You know, there's yard sales, antique stores, on the side of the road, on recycling day. Where are you going? 
She's she's trying to find a spot. So, you know, there are, what are you doing? <laughs> you can find stuff um, to buy, you know, buy used finishing supplies. And you can always repaint, clean up, or modify existing items. And, you know, one of the things that I've been doing for the past year is looking at something and going, can I put a cross stitch on it? And now I can also say, can I put a punch needle on it? More on that later. Stay tuned. Okay. The next piece, number six, one, two, three, four, five. No, number five. I can count. I promise is just because it's stained doesn't mean it's garbage. Okay. So I have this pretty piece of fabric, but it's stained. I'll just throw it away. Well, before you throw it away, think about, can you clean it? OxyClean, Borax, you know, all of the stuff, all the different, whoop, sorry about that. Pug jumped down. <laughs> think about, you know, can I clean it? Okay. And if you can't clean it, think about the checklist. Can I cut it up and upcycle it to something else? Can I dye it? Is it, if it's a stain, could you maybe embroider like a, like a flower or a geometric shape over it? How can you transform the piece without necessarily saying, oh, it's garbage. I have to throw it away. So those are just things, you know, thinking about creative solutions to something. I went ahead, my husband had some jeans and he's like, these don't, you know, what do I do? I was like, I'll take them. I'm going to make something with them. So now I've got like five or six pairs of blue jeans that I am going to work with. They are increasingly using a blue jean material for insulation, for homes, for insulation for food that is being shipped like box of food boxes and food stuffs. So think about the creative things you can do. I wanted to show this example. I got this fabric. It came in with something else. I don't like it, right? But it came, and I was like, I hate no fighting in my video. No fighting during my video, babies. All right, so I got this fabric. I don't like it. Yes, I can re-donate it. But then I thought, well, why don't I try? Hey, babies, we're not fighting on my on my floss tube channel. Get down. The pugs decided they really wanted to participate in this video, and now they are not in the room. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. That fabric, I thought, why don't I try to over dye it and see what will happen? Now, I'm not saying I did it, I made it look any better, but it was worth the effort to just give it a go and see if I could make something new with it. All right. My last tip on sustainable stitching is support your local artists and your local makers. One of the things is when you think about supporting local, not only are you supporting small businesses, small makers, or they could be large businesses, but local to you, is that you're directly contributing to somebody's livelihood. You're not paying like shipping long distances. And so that's sustainable. <laughs> and you are, you know, sourcing local materials. So for an example, I am putting together my book that will be published shortly and I'm looking, I'm thinking about finishing materials and of course y'all are going to see some thrift store finishing <laughs> upcycled materials that I got from thrift stores in my book. But I also wanted to have supplies that are replicatable, meaning, okay, you can say, yeah, Amanda May, that's great, great and wonderful that you used a recycled frame for that sampler that you put in your new book. I did a sampler y'all <laughs> you, you know it not only is it great to say like great you use a thrift store frame Amanda May but I can't find that frame so what else do you got for me well I have I got from oh my goodness it's real life people here's my caboodle just dropping stuff I got this since I'm I want to make sure I didn't just break it I got the cutest little bowl here, and I'm more on that later, and I did not break it, and my caboodle. Okay. All right, my not forgotten farm. She prides herself on using sustainable, or she harvests sustainably from her farm in Virginia, not forgotten farm, 
her husband creates these wood piece products from the trees produced or grown on the land and then milled there on site. So I, I mean, I paid shipping. So it did ship to me from Virginia, but that's, that's not, that's not terribly far. I'm in, it's still in the mid Atlantic region where I'm at, but it was sourced sustainably. It's affordable. It's going to be in my book and it's replicatable. Meaning if you like this, you can purchase it too. And yes, if you're far away, yes. However, this was sustainably sourced, meaning she used her own wood from her own land, her, her family created and built this. So that's just something to think about making things from local artisans. Now, the definition of local, I know some like pr big produce companies classify local as being within 1000 miles. Some local is within 500 miles. Some locals say, no, it has to be within 50, five, zero miles. So whatever definition of local you want to adopt, you can say local as in, I'm only going to buy things within the country that I live in, right? So like the United States, it's a big country, but it's local compared to say buying something from overseas and vice versa. These are just suggestions and just some of the tips and things to think about when I say I'm a sustainable stitcher or let's support sustainable sh stitching. Now, that's not to say I don't buy new things. Yes, I do. For instance, I bought the brand new Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Mega Issue. Yes, I have it. I have the Barbara Anna piece now that I wanted to stitch. And all the beautiful punch needle. And did I fulfill my goal for 2019 learning how to punch? Yes. Amanda May is officially a puncher, y'all. Boom. I did it. 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 I went to Primitive Homespun's Wool and Needleworks in downtown Frederick, Maryland, and took a class from the wonderful Kathy Makers. She is the owner and teacher instructor of PH um, Primitive Homespun's in Frederick. And oh my gosh. Y'all, if you are in the area, take a class from Kathy. She is just a delight. I learned so much. I Good stories. At the end of the day, I made this. I made it. I was trying to tell my husband that I made this in a three-hour class compared to cross-stitch. Like, I could finish a uh, cross-stitch this size in three hours. And he looks at me, he goes, Amanda May, I have no frame of reference. I don't know what you're talking about. I know it takes you a long time to cross stitch, but I don't, I have no frame of time. I'm like, okay, I'll give you that. You don't quite know what I'm talking about, but trust me, believe me when I say that I finished this in under three hours, having never punched before. Amazing. So I came home, of course, you know, did the mom thing, 24 seven mom, but the kids went to sleep. Guess what I did? I pulled out my brand new punch that I bought from Kathy's store and I pulled out all the things and I started making stuff. So I use using my caboodle. You all have seen me in my caboodle before, but I pulled it out again to start using it. And I'm punching with Sulky. I wanted to try it out. And Kathy had the local pottery artist, the pottery, potter, the local potter, pottery artist. Anyway, she created, she had it fabricated, um, reminiscent of the miniature, um, the yarn bowls, but in miniature to hold Valdani thread. And of course I, I left, I left my Valdani upstairs, but just as an example, it works for a sulky thread too. And I pull it through. And then as I'm punching, it just steadily comes out and unwinds and it is amazing. So this was a local mate. She has a bunch of different colors and styles and I paid $18.99 for this. Artisan pottery made locally in Frederick and it helped me punch. 
So I fulfilled my goal for 2019 of learning punch needle. I'm so excited. I got the ultra punch. She had a bunch of different ones for us to t test out. I got the ultra punch and I used my clover frame that I won in my giveaway from just cross stitch or the prize package. It wasn't a giveaway, the prize package. I used that frame and then I tried this out and I, of course I tried the Valdani. This was the sample stitch was done with the three strand Valdani using three different colors. And then this is like a paper twine and I love it. And then hot glued on the back of the tin, the ribbon. So I love it. I cannot recommend taking a class from Kathy Moore. It was fantastic. So that's what I did. That's where I spent my money. I took a class. Bought a magazine, got my caboodle, and I'm working on finishing up my book. Ah, thank you all for your kind words about it and wanting to know more about it. But if the heart is any indication, oh, I can't wait. Okay, I have, what? oh, let's do giveaway. I did the random comment picker. I filtered out duplicate comments and then did the keyword search within that. So my giveaway winner for Destination North Pole Earth. This is my 2019 winning design for Just Cross Stitch Magazine. And yes, y'all, the pattern is not in the magazine. However, Y'all can buy it from my website if you really like it, and that would be awesome. I stitched it on a hand-dyed 14-count Ada. Uh, you don't have to use that size, but <laughs> the design requirements for the magazine, you had to stitch it either on 14-count or 28-count, and I chose 14-count Ada, so that's why that's that way. So that goes to uh, GG Stitches, and she made a really cute comment saying, um, <laughs> that sh why on earth would you wear a sweater in the middle? I'm saying, you know, she's from Brazil where it's always hot, but she used in the sentence, she used earth and sweater and it filtered out for earth. So she won. So G G G I G I stitchers won this. So thank you. Congratulations. And then the next winner, it, did um, the, the filtered out. This is for the waste canvas Santa Claus. It comes with the waste canvas, the thread and the pattern, the, uh, the floss. You do not have to stitch waste canvas. You can do this on linen, even weave, Ada, claustrum, whatever you wanna do. So whatever you wanna stitch this on. However, it does come with the waste canvas if you wanna stitch your holiday sweater. And that goes to Caddy Sue Cats. So go ahead, both of you. So here I go ahead and get a hold of me. And I'll get these sent out. Yay! And for everyone else that participated, thank you so much. It was so much fun reading all the little comments and how people integrated the keywords into sentences. It's so precious. I really appreciate it. I love comments. You can comment even if you don't want to win anything. I love winning, reading the comments. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. I want to show you this really cute little tin that I found this weekend. Went to another Christmas shop. There was no cross stitch at this Christmas shop. However, I got in the cookie tin area. They had like the re... What's it called? The re... Um, you can reuse the tins. Like you can buy all the cookie tins. So I got this and it's got the little X's and it's got the little bird in the sampler. I think it's so dang cute. It has, it's, it's, it has no markings. I don't know who made it, where it came from, what it was used for, but I like it. I paid 50 cents for it and I love it. Put a cross stitch on it <laughs> and update on I pulled this silk painting I showed you out of the frame. It had the matting on it, um, the mat, and it, as you can see, the color, it discolored. But that's okay. 
Tell me below. This is an original painting. Like it's painted and it's got a cherub and it's got like, these look like white lilies. I think it's really precious or a passion. Yeah, it's a lily. Anyway, I kind of feel like this needs to be a cross stitch or a punch needle. It's hand done. I own it. I don't believe it. Anyway, I was thinking it would be really fun to <laughs> make this into a cross stitch or a punch needle pattern. Tell me below what you think. If that's silly and you're like, that cherub is weird, I would never stitch it. Or if you're like, that cherub is amazing, I would love to stitch that. So let me know below. I, I'm leaning towards making this into a cross stitch. I think it's so fun. And talk about integrating, you know, art forms, silk, an original silk painting changed into a cross stitch or changed into a punch needle. I know. Make all the things. <laughs> okay. I wanted to give a couple like little updates on my the 1990s stitching uh, cleaning party I did. So let me move this stuff out of the way so I can pull it up. I oh just as a reminder for sustainable stitching y'all I got this one out of a barn like a dirty barn like pulled it out of a barn sale. Cleaned it and have it and I love it. So don't be afraid to root around old barns. Safely, of course. Be careful for rusty nails and stuff. Tetanus shots. No joke, right? Okay. My first update. I don't want to say this was a failure, okay? But this piece was, it was rough. I tried to clean it. It looked awful. The colors, the everything. So I dyed it. And I love it. <laughs> I I wanted to save it. I, I did my best to take out the really bad staining because the staining was yellowed and like had issues. And then the, so that's going to be a small complete with rust staining. I cleaned up the pineapple and I'm playing around with how I would like to finish this, if I'm going to finish it into a hexagon, a diamond, how I'm going to do that. These little pieces, I've decided I'm going to make them into little pillows. They were framed together. I cleaned them, pulled them apart, and was just kind of playing around with placement designs and how I'm going to finish these. And these are going to be little pillows. Same. Cleaned this one, pulled it out. This is going to be a little pillow. And this one. Then I got this piece out. I am going to keep it in a, in a heart, but I'm going to cut off all of this extra fabric and make it into a little heart pillow. This is going to be in a little pillow, a little rectangle. Uh, I did not clean this one and it still has the sticky residue on the back. So I've got to figure out what to do with him and how to stretch him appropriately. But I think he would make a really cute uh, little, little piece. And then these got all washed. This one was really dirty. I'm happy with how clean it came out. This is the welcome sign. The welcome pineapple. This one, Friendship is Everlasting, super nice and clean. Now these last couple pieces I'm, I'm particularly proud of. This one, The Country Marriage, came right out. I think that might get turned into a pillow instead of in a frame. I think it's super fun. This is the one that has a little kerosene lamp stuff on the bottom. Again, fold your stitches in. I washed this guy. He was, I got him... He was in a red frame. I pulled him out. He was pretty clean. He just had a little bit of uh, dust because he was he was found upright and the dust had settled on him. So I love him. I'm going to keep him in the round. This piece is so fun. I think this will be a project bag. I think I think I want to make this into a project bag. I have to get over my fear of zippers and learn how to make a zipper, like do a zipper closure. A part of me is saying I'm just going to do an envelope, like foldy front thing, but I need to take a class and learn how to do a zipper. 
you know, I gotta learn all the things. So this came out really nice. None of these have been ironed yet. Yes, I need to iron them. And then the Zeppelin pieces. Now this one, I'm not sure if you can recall, it was, this one was hand, this was framed by the person and the back of it had the red like felt, but it wasn't wool felt. It was like the poly, like fleece. And it had been glued down uh, despite my best efforts, I there is some of the red staining and glue residue, but I feel like the margin is wide enough where it's not going to be a problem. And I, I can't decide, and tell me below, do these become pillows? Zeppelin, do these become pillows or do these become epic project bags? Tell me below. The colors didn't bleed. It's on a white, so I, I feel like it could be it could be usable for either a pillow or project bag. So this one came out and then the last one is this Zeppelin. This one was dirty. It had the staining up in the corner. I could not get out. However, again, folding it over the margin, the Zeppelin, it looks fantastic and I am super excited. I, I think this is going to be a project bag. I don't really deck, I don't have brown pillows. All my pillows are purple and pink and red. So and blue. I have different colors in my house. Like I have a purple room. I have a blue room. I have a green room. This room, this is my sun room. So it's like my white room because the white walls. I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I had my cleaning party. It was, it was a lot. And then, so you use the towels, you press down, you never wring your fabric. Okay. You, 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 you blot and you air dry. So then I had a whole load of towels that I used to, to dry these. I had to then wash those, but it's okay. I had the horizontal counter space to work with. These all got a bath. They're one step closer to either being pillows, miniature pillows for my dough bowl or my dough bathtub or project bags or pillows. So I'm very happy with that. I want to thank all of you for tuning in with me this week. Uh, mark your calendars 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday, December 17th. I am going to be doing a cross stitch tutorial live on Facebook Live at the Just Cross Stitch Facebook page. And come on and watch. We're going to do a finish. Uh, it's an integrate. It's a an envelope finish using a cross stitch embellishment and how to attach that. I would love it if you joined me and if you can't make it, totally understandable, there will be a replay of it and it will be archived on the Just Cross Stitch Facebook page. I am super duper busy getting my book together. I, as many of you probably guessed, I am not going to the 2020 Nashville market. It's not a lack of desire. It's, I have two kids under the age of five and that's hard and I can't be away from them and it's not feasible to bring them with me and all the things. Yeah, parenting is hard. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. I hope that you have a beautiful week of stitching. I hope that I helped clear the air or clarify sustainable stitching. Again, you can find the my printable wherever I put it. It'll be on my website. Uh, you can find my printable there. Have a great week. Make all the things. Save the stitches. Be well. And I'll see you next week. Take care.